So we're going to call the meeting to order at whatever time it is. Peter, are you all ready? Yes, sir. 6.01 p.m. Okay, it looks like we've got everybody. We've got Dwight to actually here live and in person. Yay, Dwight! <laughs> um, I thought that I was going to have everything here, but it wasn't here. So you guys got to give me like one minute while... Um, Tammy's supposed to be getting the, or are you printing it over there? You can face camera, Dwight. This is my first meeting in person, I think, in a long time. <laughs> Feels good. Thank you very much. So I, I believe everybody got a copy of the um, River Valley Unified School District Annual Report. I see some thumbs up by Kate. So we usually um, are, we have to have a meeting in the town opposite of where we're doing our annual meeting this year. The annual meeting's in Dover. So in two weeks, we'll be in Wardsboro um, doing the annual meeting. I'm going to get a key from you. Okay. And I'll meet you there in Wardsboro. And maybe even Dwight will come to that one too. It's close to home. And usually we just have um, the two meetings before we just review the, the warning for the annual meeting, which um, the person that did the book this year really did a great job. It was really a, a nicely done book. So um, we usually just run through it. I see we got um, Samantha and we got Dana and Amelia. So um, I don't, I believe it was in the documents too that we sent out, wasn't it? I don't believe the, the annual report was. Mark, was the annual report? No. Okay, Mark shaking his head no. So anyways, the uh, annual meeting is going to be April 26, 2022. It's a Tuesday at the um, Dover Town Hall, 189 Tapbrook Road, Dover, Vermont. Um, there's two articles that will not be voted on at that meeting. Article 12, which is the election of, of uh, board members, it'll be voted by Australian ballots to the Dover board at 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. on Tuesday, May 17, 2022 at the Corinthia Base Lodge, 14 Corinthia Road, Dover. And for the Wardsboro board member, it'll be a town meeting which commences at 1 p.m on Saturday, May 21st, 2022, at 71 Main Street, Wardsboro. I believe it's under the big top again. I think they're having a tent. Um, and the 2022 annual meeting is an in-person meeting and will follow any relevant or the most updated recommendations for health and safety issued by the state of Vermont. First article, select a moderator for July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 23 and to set a stipend of $200 per meeting for the moderator. Um, currently, Dr. Backus serves as a moderator and will at this meeting. Article two is to elect the clerk to serve for the fiscal year, July 1 to June 30th, 2023, set a stipend of $2,400 for the clerk, and also to set a stipend of $400 for an assistant clerk to be appointed and used at the discretion of the clerk. And this was a request that Andy had made to us. And, um, we all agree to Article Three. To um, Andy McLean currently serves as our clerk. Um, Article Three is to elect a treasurer to serve for the fiscal year July 1, 2022, to June 30, 2023, and to set a stipend of $2,400 for the treasurer. And Marco Tolini currently serves as our treasurer. And so the voters of the River Valley Unified School District set the annual stipend for school directors at 
at $2 million each and for the chair at $2.5 million. Article 5, shall the voters of the River Valley Unified School District approve mileage reimbursement at the federal reimbursement rate for the month in which mileage occurred? Bill, what is it currently for this month of April with the new gas prices? Uh, they have an update. They do usually do it quarterly, so we should get it uh, probably the second week of April. Okay, that'd be kind of interesting. If you could send us an email with that, because I'm sure that will get asked at one of the meetings somewhere. You got it. Thank you, buddy. Um, you guys all missed my two million and two point five million. Nobody commented. I did not miss that. I want to raise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Article six: Shall the voters of the River Valley School District authorize the board to withdraw money from the reserve fund to offset the homestead tax rate, but not more than seventy five thousand dollars? And that was a number we voted on. And what I'm hoping to do is if you will go to page in your, in your, and I know we, some of you are skipping through, um, but the tax, the, the right, the, the suspected tax rate with the information we have at this time, these pages aren't numbered. It's supposed to be numbered. It's a couple pages past it. It's got budget summary and it shows the FY22 and FY23 tax rates. Um, the easiest one probably to look at is at the end of your book. It's a three year comparison. It looks like that. I don't know if people can see it. Can you, can you... I think it's page 10 in the book. The one with the yellow chart says budget summary. Oh yeah. no, you got a different one. Mine doesn't have any page numbers. Does yours? Okay. Mm -hmm. Rich? Yeah. I don't believe the board was ever sent the final copy of the um, of the report either. I was just looking for it to put it on online, and I don't have it. Well, this isn't the final. This no, is I just sent this one out, but this is the most recent one, I think. Yeah, the, the one that Matt just sent out is not right. It's got the wrong time for the Wardsboro meeting. So, Bill, maybe you can send the right one out. I will get that to the board. Thank you, buddy. So, anyways, the, the, if anybody asks any questions about the why seventy five thousand dollars, and um, it's all in the it's it's in the tax rate, um, or it helps reduce the tax rate or, or keep the tax rate in line, and. Article seven is the budget of six million two fifty five five seventy five. Um, it's spending a twenty one two per pupil, and it's about six point four percent higher than spending for the current year. But our tax rate isn't going up six point four percent, which is kind of nice. And then Article eight. Um, to move any surplus from the 21-22 budget into the general reserve fund to be um, reserved for future use as approved by the voters. Article 9, to so the voters um, approve an annual tuition rate to approved independent schools at 19200 which is a burn burton spending school tuition for the 22-23 school year. And this is kind of like what is one of the bigger items of discussion last year. And um, and we got Lori did a really really nice graph and um, explanation for us, and I just got to find out what page that's on. <laughs> um, again, I don't have pages, but she did a tuition score report that looks like that, and you guys will see that when you get it. And it's got all the different schools that we sent to as well as the statewide average tuition rate. And, uh, and then it shows a, a little round graph with how much everybody goes to. And then the last, um, the last three year or four years budgets. So that's article, <clears throat> that's article nine. And then article 10 is shall the voters fund the reserve funds in the following amounts. And with transfers from the general reserve fund. So this won't be in raising taxes. This will just be 
moving money from the general reserve to specifics and 70,000 for the building and 20,000 for transportation. And I know last time we met, we had a discussion about that, but right under the tuition thing is the capital needs. And it lists out 10 years, what we're going to spend, what we're going to raise if we keep it at the same and um, how much we have left over. And then it lists what spending is going to be for this year. Um, so it, we tried to fit in more, but it just, it, it was kind of a little bit messy. Um, there, we did have some discussion about this at our last board meeting also. Um, the only thing I got to say is the, we've got bus one in there to be replaced next year, but bus two doesn't show up at all. So I don't know if we're planning <clears throat> to run bus two until it's really old. And, um, and the two buses are two years apart. So um, that is article 10. And then article 11 is, is discussional informational. And we thought we would talk about the board representation from the towns, the update on the new update on the new website approved at last year's annual meeting. I think we changed that, didn't we? we changed, where's Kate? It's, it's in the, um, it's in the uh, booklet. Yeah, but didn't we, I thought we changed it from update on new website to just update on website. I don't remember the new booklet. I, I don't have it in front of me. I thought it was going to be here. I'm sorry, guys. And then anything else. And then article 12 is um, the voting for the school director for three-year terms, one from Wardsburn, one from Dover. And the Dover one will be voted on May 17th. Um, by Australian ballot and the school director from Wardsboro will be voted from the floor at 1 p.m. Um, on Saturday, May 21st at, um, by the town office under the, the, the big top. So are there any questions on the warning or <clears throat> the meeting? Okay. Just the warning or the report? Well, the warning or the report. I, I, I had one. Yeah, I sent an email out. There. I was want to make sure this was correct. This is an old one. Well, I just looked okay. at the one they just sent now. It had the same thing. The one on. from Bill? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to make sure that was. Well, so I, I, no, cool. Bill, Bill hasn't sent it yet. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Then what the heck? That was from Matt. Oh, it's from Matt. Yeah. That's the most recent one I have. Yeah. <laughs> okay. we, we made a bunch of changes in it. All right. So I just, I, right. no. I thought there was gonna, it was going to be here. So okay. if everybody's all good with that report, then um, next thing we have is additions or deletions to the agenda. Um, so we have the minutes of the March 21st meeting, and I don't have any correspondence. Do we have any correspondence from anybody? Nope. Anybody have any um, issue with the minutes? Mark, you're off mute. Did you have something? Oh, okay. No, I've got some. I've, the um, the superintendent's report's not part of consent agenda, right? No, do, do, we don't approve okay. the superintendent's report. So if you have a question, you can ask that under old business. Okay. So if nobody's got any issues with the March 21st minutes, we'll accept those. Um, members of the public. Oh, actually, yes, I do. Sorry. Um, yeah, I you did. I'm just waiting for you. Yeah, I, I didn't print them out, which is why I got confused. Um, the um, the second page of the statement that I read um, isn't formatted properly, um, so it's a little unclear. I'll I'll send. I thought I sent um, sent it to Peter, but I'll have to send him an updated. Um, correctly formatted version. Uh, I'll check it out. I just pasted in what you sent, I think. Uh, yeah, you can't really cut and paste from a PDF document. It loses the formatting. Well, so I do that with an image. All right, I'll send you something. Mark, if you okay. have Word, can you send it to him in Word? I don't. Okay. I we'll use, I use, I use uh, Google. 
Peter, it doesn't have to go in the minutes. You can do it as an attachment. You can just note Mark made it, um, read a statement, and then we can just attach it to the back of the minutes as long as it's noted in the minutes. You mean you would physically attach it after it's printed? Well, no, you would attach the attach it to your minutes at the end of the minutes. Um, I'm just looking for it now, so I think that's what I did. No, you, you cut and paste it into... It was in the Windows. bottom minutes, I think. Yeah. Was, was that the only thing, Mark? Yes. Yes, it was. So we'll just make sure we put Mark's, we'll attach Mark's letter to the, to the minutes that we file and that goes online. Bill, will you make sure that happens? I will. Thank you. Um, members of the public, Dana, I think this is the only one, right? It's Dana in public, yeah. Oh, Amelia, I'm sorry, Dana and Amelia. I'm good, thank you. Dana, you all set? No answer is a good answer. Um, members of the staff, Samantha. Wow, I can't believe I'm the only member. Um, no, I don't have anything, Rich. Just here to listen. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Sorry, was the minutes not approved? No, the minutes were approved. We, we want to we we make that correction. Mark's letter as a as a as an attachment to the not in you know it doesn't have to be in the body, just note in the minutes that Mark read from a prepared statement which is attached to these minutes. Yeah, it's attached as an appendix, but uh, apparently I pasted the text out of the PDF instead of an exact image, which I could also do. So don't worry about it, I'll fix it. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, so old business, superintendent's report. Bill, you submitted your cabinet report. Um, and do you have anything to add to that before we go to questions on, on your cabinet report? Uh, no, nothing too exciting. Uh, just I got to meet with all the superintendents on Thursday for the first time in two years in person. And uh, that was an interesting experience um, to see all the people on Zoom finally in person. So I'm starting to appreciate the ability to see people in person. And it was uh, a fun event. And uh, this year we'll have the most superintendent churn. Uh, in over a decade, uh, we're looking at a third of all superintendencies will be different um, from the beginning of this year to the beginning of next year. Cool. Um, Mark, you said you had a question or comment or? Yeah, yeah just a comment, uh, not really, a, not a question at all. Um, at the beginning of, of, um, of his report, um, he references the March 22nd JFO analysis. Um, for the uh, waiting study. Um, I just want everybody to, to know that that analysis is based on um, fiscal year 20, um, but not based on true fiscal year 20 numbers. Um, so you gotta take it with a grain of salt. Um, there were some uh, adjustments made. Um, the uh, Act 46 incentives um, were pulled out and the yield was changed. So the numbers that are actually in that analysis um, don't match up with what you will have seen um, ourselves. Thank you, Mark. A any other questions for Bill on the superintendent's report? Only once, going twice. So Bill, principal's report. We had a written principal report from our two administrators. Anything to add either one of you guys? No, we did not have a written one this time. We have it on the uh, second. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, I lied to you. That's okay. I thought I well, we have some things to update you on. Sure. Who's going like? first? Want to go first? Sure. Well, Tammy, you're not in the right spot. You got to come over oh, here yeah. and sit <laughs> next to Dwight. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Dwight fights this one. <laughs> you know, he just got let out in a couple of years. That's right. All right, uh, teachers attended grade <clears throat> level meetings last week with a focus on uh, math instruction, learning about the math menu. 
uh, and improving their instructional practice. Go sure. Um, summer school and summer camp planning are underway, and we are planning to run a similar summer camp and summer school option for our River Valley students this summer that we did last summer with a slight fee to families um, to offset some of the expenses and reductions in the grant funding that we're um, how we're funding it. Um, it's it will happen here at Dover School this year. It'll be open to all River Valley students. And um, our summer school director, Crystal Griswold, is uh, back again and uh, making all the arrangements. That's it. Oh, no, we got a tag team going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go back to Fort Worth. Oh, sure. He's in the middle. Right. Yeah. It's going to be like tennis. Both schools uh, continue to adjust to the new uh, max, mask optional environment. I think things are going fairly <laughs> well, uh, but definitely some adjustments. Uh, managing a few COVID cases in, in one of our, our schools quite well. The symptoms that we're hearing about with the new variant are very mild, much like a common cold, uh, which makes it a little harder for families, but families are doing a, a good job, I think, of keeping kids home, picking them up when they're not feeling well and um, not risking everybody's health. Oh, the last thing is the um, next week is the IB self-study. The team is coming to... Uh, do the once in five year evaluation. So as you know, the staff have been uh, working up to this for the entire year. And um, so we're excited and nervous and looking forward to meeting the team and answering their questions. Oh, you know what we forgot? Key Waden. Oh, right. Key Waden's back this year. Right. Yeah. So we're excited to be sending the kids to Key Waden. Woohoo! <laughs> that was more like that. <laughs> Sam. Sam. Oh, that's Sam? Yeah, that would be Sam. Oh, Laura. Laura's thing lit up. <laughs> Okay. It was hey. not Sam, but I, I'm with her. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, you got to plan it ahead of time and do it in unison. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Okay, Mark, you're off mute. You. Do you have a question, sir? Nope, I'm all good. Um, any questions for principal's report? Hearing none, Dwight, you open? Yeah, that's great. I just one quick question. Summer school fee to parents kind of just bothers me a little yeah. bit. Is there a scholarship <laughs> program if parents have needs that and you know what are the fees or have they not been determined yet? Good um, question. So the fee is ten dollars a day. And, and for any families that are on free and reduced, it's half five dollars a day. And for any families that are involved in summer school, there's no charge. So trying to incentivize getting people to agree to uh, participate in summer school. So zero for anybody who needs school, five for any free and reduced families, and 10 for any non-free and reduced And it families. includes lunch. And that includes lunch and, and some, some breakfast as well. Okay. Yeah. But can we, if, if you have a, a child that isn't in mm -hmm. free and reduced or because they didn't fill anything yeah. out, can we kind of... Can, can there be some kind of scholarship set up for, or is there like a multi-child discount too, if you send three of your kids? Yeah. Um, and we have done multi-child in the past when we've had much higher rates for the summer program. Um, we haven't planned for one this year at this point, but there's no reason we couldn't. And anytime a family is struggling with anything that we're doing, uh, we always offer the option of just letting us know and we figure out alternative ways. Okay. Sometimes in the past, the school club has stepped up and donated, uh, particularly for winter sports and, and other programs to help families who may not be able to do it. I, I would just hate to see somebody who really would benefit and would want to yeah. do it and the parents not, you know, struggling a little bit because things yeah. so aren't great. Yeah, that's a good point. In the real world. Audio is a little bit sketchy right now. I was saying, Peter, how wonderful you are at doing our minutes. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I heard that part. Okay. Are you all set? We, yes, sir. We were, we were just discussing um, a scholarship if there was a, a family that, you know, didn't qualify for any of the above but um, wanted to participate. Noted. Thank you. Okay. If you guys are all set with the principal's report, um, can I just bounce around a little bit? While Bill's still here, because he needs to go, can I just, I'm going to skip the waiting study, Mark and Laura, if you don't mind, for a couple minutes. And I, I was going to go to articles of agreement, voting date. Uh, no, I don't need that one. 
What, Bill, what else did I need from you? Well, um, I never mind not being needed. So I don't see anything on there that's absolutely necessary for Bill. Uh, but I think uh, what we talked about is at our uh, agenda planning meeting with Kate is uh, we just wanted to make sure that um, we had an opportunity um, to review, uh, you know, open meeting, uh, the importance of uh, electronic communications and uh, uh, yeah. what our role is in that. Um, okay. And, and I, I think we that's on the hinges of Chad um, being uh, just like me. He finds something interesting as an article and he sends it to people and says, hey, here's an interesting article, which I don't want to stop. But I, I thought it might be a good idea to just kind of have an opportunity to chat about that so that we can keep everybody uh, comfortable uh, so that uh, we don't cross any lines. OK, so um, if it's OK, if you you all don't mind, let's just go to add a new business and cover bullet two and three guidance from BDH Montego article and open meeting law. So um, as Bill said, Chad had sent out an article from Vermont Digger and there was a couple comments that went back and forth. And I said, you know, we really shouldn't be going back and forth on this. I don't feel like anything crossed the line at that time, but I just didn't want to have any more comments going back and forth that maybe did. So I had suggested that we discuss this in a meeting. Um, and if we, it's really difficult for us to, we really shouldn't be sending emails back and forth where we, we make decisions or um, or where, where there's some discussion. And again, there really wasn't any discussion. Chad just said an article. I thought it was a good article. I think a lot of people liked it. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't get into a deeper discussion about it. And I also thought maybe to make sure things are appropriate that we send out that maybe we should send them to the superintendent first and ask him if it's appropriate, if he should send it out. Because the other thing too, is he may want to send it to his other boards, the West River, the Marlboro and the Wyndham board. Um, so that was pretty much my, um, the, the only thing I wanted to make a comment about. Laura, I see you got your hand up. So maybe we'll let you go next. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Uh, I really support that. The one thing that I wanna, I, I want to note, and I slightly disagree with, um, you know, I don't think it's really a judgment call on whether or not a line has been crossed or not. I mean, it's, we are literally, you know, the public, we're a public body and the public has a right to be at our meetings. And so if a quorum of the board is having a discussion, even if it's one that doesn't feel like, you know, it's of anything of substance, the public has a right to be there. And that is that is why um, this issue makes me really anxious. Uh, and so uh, I also appreciate sharing um, of articles, um, of resources. I think it's really great when we have a board that does that and tries to enrich one another, but this, this is actually something that going back and forth at all, at all uh, amongst board members with a quorum copied really stresses me out. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't matter what we're saying. So I would like us to just be clear that it's not, the, you know, we're not making a judgment call about whether or not it's something that is okay. Thank you, Laura. Um, so any, those of you, um, I think, did we attach it to the agenda items or the stuff that the, um, attached, yeah. I, I thought it was really interesting that the super, the commissioner of education would attack a superintendent like that for you know making a decision based on issues in their town. So Chad, thank you for that article. That was a good article. Um, I really appreciate it. And it's, um, unless anybody else has any discussion, it's just kind of, oh, go ahead, Mark, I'm sorry. Um, so Laura, I apologize. I don't mean to um, argue and disagree with you, but, um, the, the open meeting law, which is one VSA 
um, section 310 um, says, uh, if a quorum of board members are part of a group email and any dialogue occurs addressing business matters, this discussion is a meeting under the law. And then it says business, quote unquote, is the public body's governmental functions, including any matter over which the public body has supervision, control, jurisdiction, or advisory power. So I just think it's important if we're going to be um, that, that we're, we're very specific about what the law actually is. There can be correspondence um, that does not fit into the open meeting law. And that's not to say that um, we should be keeping things from the, the public um, by any stretch, but we should be we should be specific. Yeah. And, and again, Mark, I, I agree. I don't think anything crossed the line, I was just concerned if the next email from somebody in the board was, well, should we consider masks? And then that would cross the line. Um, yeah, I was just addressing the issue of, yeah. of there should be no correspondence at all. There should be no back and forth. There, there is a very specific definition of business that, that must be <clears throat> a meeting. Other than that, there can be. Thank you. Laura, you got your hand up again. I do, yes. Okay. Yeah, I actually feel pretty strongly about this. I feel like it's a slippery slope uh, and that, um, you know, uh, it is very, very easy for us to not have discussions via email. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the only times that I have seen that happen, I, I haven't. When there's an emergency, I have seen the chair reach out individually to each board member. And so while there may be instances where it is technically uh, legal, I am really uncomfortable with our board um, making that judgment call. And I would like us as a practice to agree that we're not going to do that. Uh, I, I really don't think it's necessary. And uh, I'd like to push this issue a little bit, actually. So I would like us to have a discussion about uh, if, if, it's, if it's possible for us to have a board policy uh, that we will not discuss uh, items via email. I, I think it's not good business and it does not promote uh, tr public trust. Okay, so I would think then that may be a bigger discussion than what we can do tonight. Um, go ahead, Chad. Um, you know, Laura's on to something, um, you know, as far as maintaining the public trust, and, and I am wholeheartedly right there in lockstep with you that that is something we need to maintain. Um, you know, coming from another industry in which I work, it's uh, I think the policy to not have discussion uh, is going to hamper the growth. Um, and again, like something like this article, again, it was just shared. It was relevant to what we do, uh, but not necessarily anything meant for guidance. Um, and, uh, you know, to have the opportunity as a new member of the board to be able to learn from all of you veterans uh, who have had experience with the folks that were involved in that article, uh, you know, that was really important. You know, to say, hey, you know, we, we haven't heard uh, of a leader at the state level do anything like this. You know, that's certainly, uh, you know, comforting to me. Um, and I thought it was a bit odd. So to get that background was great. Uh, and so that discussion was worthwhile. I think if we look at a policy, um, you know, it's to maintain the public trust, Laura, very easy as a, as a policy to uh, not delete emails. Um, you know, in the financial services world, You've got to have that that ability to to go back and look and, and companies have inserted policies to not delete emails so that you have the retrospective. Um, and that's something that, that I would consider. But to say, you know, no, as a group of uh, folks that are, you know, beholden to the mission of the River Valley Unified School District. You know, we understand. I think Mark did a great job pointing out what is what constitutes business by by law, uh, you know, that we're governed by. Um, so, you know, a policy to. Uh, hamstring us, I think, is, is going to be detrimental in the long term, but a policy to make sure that we do have accountability, uh, that is something I would support.
Lauren, we're gonna let Mark go next and then I'll get back to you. So um, I'd be more than happy to put together any sort of policy that you guys want. Um, I, I will vote against a policy like this though, because um, the, the law is clear um, and we have a, um, and uh, forgive me, I don't have my policy book in front of me, but we have a policy in place for, um, for public to make complaints. Um, and if the public believes that there has been a discussion that should not have been made in private, um, there is a mechanism for them to, um, to bring that up. And as Chad mentioned, our, our emails are all, <clears throat> are all open to FOIA. Um, anybody at any time um, can put in a FOIA request um, and all of our emails are subject to that. Um, so as far as public trust goes, um, I, I believe that, that what's important is that um, we preserve all business, all board business for public, public forum unless it's executive session. Um, discussion of topics outside of that though, um, I don't think we need a policy to, to discourage that. Thank you, Mark. Laura, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, as a case in point as to why I think we need this policy, uh, I actually don't agree with the chair uh, that this didn't cross the lines. I actually think the public might be interested in participating in a discussion about what is happening at the state level related to COVID guidance to schools and the support or lack thereof that is happening for schools uh, in relation to that guidance. And so uh, I'm, I'm intrigued that this feels like something that is necessary to dig into as opposed to uh, as our chair has, uh, you know, helped us, reminded us, you know, very simply, we can send articles that are of interest to the superintendent for, uh, for to be dispersed. Uh, and we can also ask the chair, just send an email to the chair and say, uh, Mr. Chair, this article uh, concerns me. I think that this is something our board should talk about. And uh, I am quite certain that the chair would put that on the agenda. Um, but it is the actual, it's, it's the disagreement that we have right now between myself and the chair about whether or not that discussion was okay or not that I would like to just avoid. And I think um, I'm not sure what is lost by agreeing as a board that though there may be some instances where it would be okay, perhaps if we're talking about going to dinner somewhere together or who's gonna pick somebody up for a ride, uh, that as a practice, we are not going to do it. And Mr. Chair, that is all I'm gonna say on this. But if we, um, I feel really strongly about this and if we're not able to come to resolution, I would like it to be on the agenda for the next meeting. Uh, if, if we believe that uh, the majority of the board believes that this is something that must be allowed, I would like us to really dig in here and get very specific and have a public discussion about what we can and cannot talk about without the public present. Okay, Mark, hang on a second. Everybody's got to speak twice, except for Kate, Dwight, and I think Chad only spoke once. You have? Yeah, might as well chime in. I, I really agree with Laura. I think even, you know, back and forth on email, it, first of all, you don't get the whole context, you know, and you just get a few opinions here or there. I think anyone giving an opinion on email is just improper. Um, and I think the way that Laura spelled it out, makes the most sense to me, you know, um, bring it to the superintendent's attention. And if you feel this deserves uh, some discussion, bring it to the chair's attention, 
And then we'll all talk about it like we're doing all right now. And that's the best way to have a conversation, not just for the fact that it's out in the open, but the fact that we're, we're really bouncing ideas off each other like we've always done in the past. So I, I would agree. I think once you, you put an opinion on paper, you, you've crossed the line. So I, I'm with Laura on that. It, but just so you know, the reason I don't think the other one crossed the line is there really wasn't any discussion on opinions. It was just it was more of a discussion no, about I get it. The, the article. I, I get it. But and it was he, still it, it would, the public would have benefited from hearing those opinions, I think. Well, and, and again, I don't like I said, I don't, yeah. I don't know if it was really opinions. It was just like, here's an article. Yeah. Okay. Sent Maybe out. you're right about that too. But you, you, in terms of if you were right, one more step and we, we would have gotten well, that. Opinion. That's what <laughs> concerned me is. Right. So, um, and I don't think any, again, I, I don't agree anybody. I, I don't believe anybody did anything wrong. Okay. Um, Kate, are you all set? So I think like it's important to put information out there and to share information. And if it gets to the point where it feels like people are making it a discussion, you put the pause button on and we'll just bring it to the like and do it just what Rich did with the pause button and just bring it to the board meeting and discuss it then. Like, because sometimes when you send an email out, you don't know if it's going to create a discussion or not. So, sending information, pausing when necessary, and just understanding that there's a procedure in place. I don't know, I think that kind of makes sense. Because I don't want to discourage people from sharing information because that was a good read. Um, and just maybe that we're all mindful that we don't make a, I don't know, yeah. That our words are always, yeah, that we're always just mindful that our world, words are a matter of public record, regardless of if we're sitting here in the meeting or on our email. Just always a good reminder. Thank you, Kate. Um, I'm sorry, Mark, you and then Laura, after Mark, you get another shot at it. Um, so, uh, Kate, I agree with you completely with everything you just said. Um, the only point I was going to make was that later in our agenda, we have um, a topic of a code of ethics um, on, on our agenda, and um, that may be a more appropriate place versus a policy um, to, to, to have this either discussion or, um, include something, um, as part of that code of ethics, um, in regards to, um, public available, well, yeah, public availability of all discussions, or I don't know how you'd phrase it, but, um, just a suggestion. Thank you, Mark. Laura, are you all set? I was, yep, all set. Okay, how about folks, if we do this, let's, and I don't think we need a policy right now, but if, if you do see an article somewhere and you think it's appropriate, send it to the superintendent. Say, Bill, is this appropriate to send out? If you see something that you would like to have a discussion or you think would be worthwhile, like Chad, if you saw that and said, hey, I wonder if we should go back to masks now. Other schools are doing that. Then send that to me, not to the entire board, and then just say, hey, can we add this? I, I would like to see this be a discussion. Any board member can request anything to be discussed, and we'll, we, we'll put it on the agenda. And we also always have additions or deletions to the agenda. And usually we don't want to do something that we're going to take a vote on that's going to change policy or because then the public isn't aware of it. But if you want to bring something up like, Hey, at the uh, in the Brattleboro School District, they're starting to wear masks. Is that something we need to consider? And we can say, okay, let's have that discussion at the next meeting. Here's the, here it is. That way it gets worn. And, and people that would come to a meeting, if we were to just say tonight that, hey, we're going to talk about masks, it, reinstituting masks next week, you know, you know for a fact we would have a lot more people here because a lot of people would want to express their opinion. So that, that's the most important thing, too, when we make a decision that the public has had the availability to know that we're going to discuss it and that the people um, can come and talk about it um, to help sway our opinions or our thoughts or what we do. So, um, Bill, is that good with you? Is that, That's not going to overburden you. There's not a lot of stuff that goes out. I think that uh, actually was a very enjoyable 
uh, discussion. And I think that is a good resolution for the time being. So is everybody okay with that? Is there anybody that's not okay with that? Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Um, does anybody have anything else? Thank you, Laura. Uh, does anybody else have anything else that we need um, the superintendent for? Or they think we should have the superintendent involved in? Superintendent has something. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, when we were planning our agenda, uh, I did not put on uh, your uh, standard uh, agenda item for financials. And um, it's been a very busy week last week. We had a lot of people out. So I apologize for not getting them to you until today. Uh, you have a couple options. You guys can add it to the agenda. You can add it to the 18th agenda. We will have to pay the things that have to get paid. Um, and then you can retroactively do it. But I, I just wanted to alert you as a board that A, I apologize that it's not on the agenda. And B, you can either add it to the agenda now or you can add it on the 18th. And uh, we will have to send out the, you know, the things that have to be sent out in the next two weeks. Yeah, I, I just got it tonight and I usually there's a, a file folder so why don't we, if it's okay, let's just do it on the 18th. Everybody got it today. I'm not sure if people even had, a, did people have a chance to see that? Or you guys want to vote on it tonight? Or I sent it to them at two o'clock. The odds are very low that they had a chance to review that. Okay, I saw a couple of heads shaking no. So Peter, would you just note that for the 18th? Kate, can you remember that when we set the next agenda, please? Kate's my memory. She keeps reminding it's me. agenda this. item. Got it. Okay, you and obviously there's a lot of things that like electric bills and stuff that have to get paid so we don't get late fees. So um, they, they'll be fine. Bill, are you all set then? I am all set. And um, I appreciate the efficiency with which you guys are conducting this meeting while still being able to have uh, some discussion points of items of interest. So thank you very both all of you very much. If everybody's good with Bill, let's wave them off and say happy finals. You're yeah, I wish I could be watching the final. Luckily, the game's at 920. So <laughs> I'll get to go to the other meeting and still make the game. Okay. Have a great day, you guys. Thank you all. Bye, Bill. Good night, Bill. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to old business. Waiting study updates. Mark and Laura, we usually get updates from you guys. And I know there's a lot of cool stuff going on. So who's going first? Why well, you want to take it? Sure. Uh, I'll give you my perspective in the house uh, and Mark can talk about what's happening with the coalition. So the Senate bill, which calls for correcting the weights uh, and then a number of other uh, number of other policies, some of which um, uh, still have some questions attached to them, uh, has come over from the Senate to the House. It's a five-year roll-in. Uh, and uh, a five-year roll-in, to be clear, protects uh, those who have benefited from the system um, uh, being broken. Uh, you know, it wasn't their fault, but they, it protects those who've been benefiting. And I am concerned, does it roll in relief fast enough for those who have not? Uh, the House Ways and Means Committee is continuing. There's no audio since Ways and Means. Well, I understand that, Peter. She doesn't know it, though. Hey, Laura, Laura, Laura. We know somebody on the Energy and Technology Committee, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Laura, you're getting, um, we're not getting anything out of you. Sorry. Trying to talk to 
Okay, Mark, Laura just muted herself. So why don't we, you can fill us in what you know, and then if Laura gets- Can you all hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. We didn't hear anything after Ways and Means. Okay, I apologize. Uh, and I think I'm in a place with good cell service for a few more minutes. Uh, in the Ways and Means Committee, they are still looking thus far at a cost equity proposal as, a, as, um, as opposed to weights. Uh, I was asked to explain to a couple of members actually of the Ways and Means Committee what the difference was. I think we've talked about this here, uh, but very succinctly, the weights work uh, to balance and to ensure that um, the resources are allocated, access to resources is allocated equitably. Cost equity requires that we actually provide, not we, that the state provide funding for the actual cost uh, of the increased, uh, increased need. So for instance, uh, with uh, ELL, uh, English language learners, that would be a $25,000 um, per, uh, per student uh, grant. That's, that's how much extra it costs to uh, educate. And, and with cost equity, you have to provide the, the amount. Um, the other big difference between those two is cost equity is really the state starting to make decisions and say that we don't trust local districts to make decisions. Um, there's a bit of a blame game that has been going on with this discussion uh, over the last year and a half, uh, discussion about uh, not trusting local districts, about the decision-making that happens and, and what local districts will do with uh, the appropriate level of resources that they should have had for the last 20 years. Uh, so we're hoping, <clears throat> we're hoping to see that stop and uh, we are hoping to see a shift in the Ways and Means Committee pretty quickly. We, the session is coming to a close. Uh, the House has sent us a bill that has weights. Uh, if the Ways and Means Committee passes out of it a bill that has cost equity, uh, first of all, it will be a, a, an extremely long and contentious battle on the floor and of the House. And if it passes the House, uh, it would then go to conference committee. And it's hard to imagine how a conference committee is where you work out the differences. Those two uh, types of funding are so different, it's not really likely that they would be worked out. And so if the Ways and Means Committee does not shift soon to talking about weights and the Senate bill, uh, it is my belief and the belief of a number of my colleagues, a growing, which is a growing number, uh, that that will be an indication that Ways and Means is trying to kill the bill. Uh, I have assurances from the speaker who I remain in contact with that it is her intention to get a bill passed this year that the governor will sign. And uh, so we are working really hard on that. Uh, this is the moment right now uh, to pull out all of the stops in terms of letters. Uh, I think Mark will talk about some public outreach um, and opportunities to testify or be present. Uh, and this is the moment to do that. We are we are out of time. We are at the at the place. So with that, I'm going to mute myself. Hey, and that's a perfect lead in for you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Um, I want to go back to something that Laura was saying before um, ways and means in regards to the transition. Um, something that that um, something that is not being spoken about enough is that when Act 60 um, was put in place, there was a three-year transition. That three-year transition was only for towns and districts that were going to see an increase in their taxes. Those that were seeing an increase in their taxing capacity or reduction in their taxes um, were put in place instantaneously. Um, and the state used one-time money. I have no idea where they got it from or even how much it was. It doesn't really matter. But the state added money to the education fund in order to cover the, um, the additional funding to the, um, to the districts that would be gaining taxing capacity. What we are looking at now, what S-287 has in it, is a five-year transition that transitions up about one-fifth at a time and down about one-fifth at a time. 
Um, so we're looking at something that is a very different transition than what the state has done in the past. Um, and that is one of the aspects that we are um, working hard to change. Um, to outreach, um, the coalition is um, trying to put together another press conference um, like we had what feels like years ago now, but um, was probably it was probably about a year ago. Um, um, this week, um, up at the um, up at the state house, um, we are starting to send out um, action alerts to our email group to have people contact um, their representatives, the members of Ways and Means, um, and House Education. But at this point, Ways and Means, which is as Laura said, is is really where the um, where the fight is right now. Um, I could not agree with her more. Everything that we are hearing um, is that the Senate, um, the Senate is, is dug in rightfully with weights. Um, they don't want to consider cost equity. Um, so ways and means will be killing this, <clears throat> excuse me, will be killing this if that's what they put out. Um, there will be opportunities to, to testify. Um, you know, Rich has, has talked about possibly testifying in regards to um, trans, uh, transitions and the histories, the history of transitions, um, as he's seen. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any other topics that would be open to, um, but that would be obvious for members of our board, but I will try to come up with that and send, send an email. Um, I'll send it to Rich and Rich can send it out. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm all over the place, but um, we are um, we are working our way through the bill. The coalition is is um, going to be trying to address a half dozen or so different points in the bill um, with legislators, um, as well as advocating to maintain the weights and the um, and ELL as a weight. Um, those two aspects that came over from the Senate over to the House. So I think that's all I've got. Hey, Rich. Laura. Sorry, just one more thing, if I might. I would just say that, uh, you know, I, I think Mark indicated we're trying to have a press conference this week. Um, it is appropriate for anyone from our SU, from our region, uh, from our school district that feels that um, they would like to be there in support that they have something to say uh, to come. Uh, I believe that there will be kids coming from some of our other school districts as well. So uh, I know it's not a lot of notice, but it is appropriate if anybody is feeling so moved. So and if so, you can coordinate all that through me. I'd be happy to do that. So just a couple points, you know, it's, it's interesting. Madeline Kunin was in our school back in 1985 or six when she brought forth her new education funding in which Dover pretty much got left alone, but um, we didn't get as much as we used to. And then um, we've had this current at 60 uh, and that was about, that lasted about 10 years. And then when Act 60 came in, like Mark said, they put money in. But it was more than just the first year, Mark, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but they also had all these projections. And the projections were that the, the gold towns would keep spending at this high level, so they would get this much from the gold towns, and that the receiving towns were going to still spend down here, so they would only need this much to cover them. And what happened was all the, the – um, you know, the gold towns really reduced their spending and they brought a lot of money in from outside sources. And then the, the towns that were receiving towns started spending a lot more. So right away, the whole system just almost imploded within a year. Richard, yeah, Richard, yeah. Wow. Part, of, part of that story that we don't tell enough is that the shift in the taxing capacity we now know from the weights not being equitable means that large and wealthy districts all of a sudden had more taxing capacity and they used it. Yeah, no, and, and the other part of it too is, is that cost everybody and then the state had to keep propping up the plan. My point was 
you know, they felt it was so important to, to do that because there have been 10 years of, of unfair taxing. Well, now it's been 20 years. And instead of doing it in, in two or three years, they want to do it over five years and not do it. So I, I think there's a lot of really good, good points to, um, to make that they, they should do it. And again, we've been there with grants before and grants don't work. We've seen the grants be good for a year or two. So, I mean, I, I guess I don't understand when they have real history now, why, why Wings and Means, well, I know why, but I mean, it just seems bad that Wings and Means is trying to do that. Amelia, you got your hand up, go ahead. I was wondering if this press conference that Mark had mentioned, um, this is a question for him, is this gonna be in person solely or will there be a virtual aspect if we can't make it up to Montpelier? It will be recorded um, and put on uh, the coalition's YouTube channel, but it will be just in person. Okay. Um, Thank you. And and uh, we it's not finalized yet, um, but once it is, we will send out a a statement um, so that you guys will have um, all the information about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Are there any other comments on on the waiting study? Are you guys ready to move on? Okay, so the next item is just really it just information. Um, when we were talking about the articles of agreement voting, I and Andy came and met with us. He'd said that he'd like to do it in either August or November during the primary or the general election. And Bill had said, you know, the attorney's thinking it'd be better during the the general election in November. And Andy said, oh my gosh, that was not what I wanted to say, he, he wanted to say he couldn't do it during the general election because um, they use a tabulator and then it would have to be a different piece of paper. So we just, we can't use that November date, but he was okay if we had to have a special meeting. So if we're gonna move that forward when the attorney sends us his, um, his thoughts after seeing um, what passes out of the, the legislature, um, it's just not gonna be November. They're, um, it was just a, an FYI. Um, and then do we have a reminder? The um, annual meeting is Tuesday, April 26, 7 p.m. at Dover Town Hall. And then, Mark, you want to have a conversation about Robert's rules. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Um, so again, let me just pull up the document. So, um, Title 16 is, uh, VSA's Title 16 is the education um, statutes. Um, 16 VSA section 554 um, covers schools dis school districts, um, requires that we use Robert's rules um, for our meetings. Robert's rules, um, I can grab a book over there, um, is a very long book with an awful lot of great detail in it. Um, that would make our meetings a whole lot more complicated than they actually are. So um, we can um, vote as a board, um, presumably, well, we can do it anytime, but at the reorg meeting is where it probably makes most sense to use Robert's Rules of Orders for small boards. Um, we did send out, uh, Bill sent out a document um, earlier today, I believe, um, which has the relevant sections from Robert's Rules in it. Um, and I'll just very quickly cover um, the aspects um, of the of Robert's rules for small boards. Um, some of them would apply more to us than others, but um, it's only seven of them. Um, one, members may raise their hand instead of standing when seeking to obtain the floor. Um, we never stand, so that that isn't really a change. Um, Two, motions need not be seconded. That would be a change. Um, there's no limit to the number of times a member can speak. Again, that's not really gonna affect us too much. Um, we, we don't really limit people in their opportunity to speak as it is. Um, informal discussion of a subject is permitted while no motion is pending. Again, that's something that we already do. Um, when a proposal is, is perfectly clear, to all present, a vote can be taken without a motion having been introduced. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Um, we sort of do this by a show of hands at times. Um, you know, Rich will call for a show of hands, but it can be something, um, an, an official vote. Um, Rich would not have to, to stand when he, um, um, when he puts questions to a vote. Um, I'm sure that makes him very happy. Um, and um, and the, the, the chair um, is able to participate um, in discussion and vote on all questions, something that with Robert's rules of orders, um, the chair cannot do. Um, so it would be my recommendation that um, moving forward at our annual reorg meetings, um, part of the script that we go through includes um, uh, uh, discussion and vote on using Robert's rules for small boards. Thank you, Mark. So it was, I don't remember when it changed, but we used to actually vote when we reorg to, to adopt Robert's rules and then it became the standard for us. And we have discussed, at least at the Dover before, we have discussed, um, and a lot of times we'll modify um, there was a group of board members at one time that wanted the chair to vote every time. And I always felt that it was, you know, more of running the meeting. So I always said that I would only vote to create or break a tie. So we did have a discussion. You can actually modify some stuff if the board's good with that. And no, I'm not going to stand anytime I call for a vote. Sorry, but I'd probably be better exercise at the meetings. So um, again, I think Mark makes some good points. Is there, we can, uh, obviously uh, Mark's suggestion is that we, we do this at the reorg meeting. Um, I don't, is there anything that anybody wants to say? Is there any information, more information we need to get? Um, or is there any discussion? We're not, and we're not gonna have a vote. Don't believe Mark, you're, you wanted to vote tonight. You brought, you just bring it up. So we would be prepared at reorg, right? Correct. Okay, go ahead, Laura. Yeah, I guess I, I think that I just heard your thoughts on this, Rich, but as uh, the town moderator and the school board chair for 25 years, having served in this capacity, is there, do you have any concerns about uh, shifting to this? It doesn't seem like it's really a change. So the only thing, I, you know, we, We've had had discussions before about not requiring a second on a motion. And people felt that if you would require a second on a motion, um, it could just create a lot of motion on the ground that, that are not going to be seriously discussed. Um, really, other than that, and you know, the standing we've never done, there isn't a lot of change. We, we, run, we don't run a very tight meeting. But if somebody wanted to challenge us, you know, we really should. I mean, Robert's rules also says you're supposed to get a person who's speaking pro and con. So, you know, like I'm not that since you're if you speak pro about it, I need to get the next person who has an opposite opinion. It's um, it's really kind of interesting. I mean, a town meeting, I don't know how you ever do that if let's we line people up. Um, so I, I the only it's up to you folks. I mean, I'll, we'll run the meeting however you guys want it run. Um, but I just, um, I always felt I liked the second on um, motions and I like the, the ability for us to kind of discuss stuff, bounce some stuff around. And then if we make a motion, you know, then we, we have to be a little bit more formal. So it sounds like those are all things that we can continue doing. Am I wrong? Yeah, unless, unless somebody wants to challenge us. So, okay. So, okay. In, uh, yeah, is there something, I guess my, my question is, is there something we would stop doing or that we would start doing that we typically haven't? I, I mean, I guess I'm hearing that uh, we would be able to make motion, people would be able to make motions that wouldn't have a second. And so, uh, and, you know, call for a vote over and over without support of anybody else on the board. 
I think, Mark, I don't know. That's kind of, I think that's the biggest difference. I don't know if... if well, from from a, a legal perspective, um, we are we are not we're not kosher right now. Um, to to be kosher, we need to to vote on. Do we have a legal, op have a legal opinion on that? Well, I, I want me to want me to read the statute to you verbatim. Uh, no, I've read the statute. Okay. So, but you know, I think that there can be different interpretations of the law. And so, you know, I think you made a statement that we're not kosher right now. And if that's the case, uh, I'm wondering if you have gotten a legal opinion to give you the confidence to say that. Um, have I spoken to a lawyer? No. Am I very confident that, quote unquote, a school board meeting shall be conducted in accordance with Vermont open meeting law? Robert's rules of order shall govern yeah. the conduct of school board meetings, yeah. period. I don't see any, yeah. I don't see any gray area there. Yeah, no, I think it's the other pieces that we're talking about and that I had asked Richard, um, you know, if there were changes to what we do, you are saying that we are not copacetic now. I think we do follow Robert's rules now. And so I guess I'm looking for some more detail on this. It doesn't seem like this should be anything contentious. I mean, we, we need to follow Robert's rules. And so I guess I would like to, you've, you've, you've raised this issue. So I would like, I guess, to be a little bit more specific about what is happening that, uh, or what is not happening that should be happening. So and whether or not we're confident that, that there's a problem. So why don't, why don't we do this too? I mean, this is good discussion. And I, I appreciate Mark bringing this up before reorg so we can get that opinion. Let me just um, let me see, make a phone call and just ask a couple of questions um, to find out if we're if we're doing something illegal now, because we shouldn't be doing something if it's illegal. Well, I, so, Richard, if I might, excuse me, Mr. Chair, may I be recognized? Sure. You, you kind of had the floor. You, you were asking a question and we see, were responding to you. So I appreciate that, but I feel like if that if we're going to actually make a query, we should be maybe a little bit more formal about it. So are you going to be reaching out to an attorney? Do we need to make a motion? Like, you know, is that, does you reaching out satisfy Mark? Does it satisfy, you know, my question, like, is there consensus that we need to reach out? Okay, good, good points. So we've got some other people that want to speak. So why don't we move forward? Go ahead, Chad. Well, I think to answer Laura's question, is there anything we're doing wrong? Yes. I mean, from a, a greatly legal standpoint, I, I don't know. That's great. But, you know, as the small group rules say, there's it's more pro forma, like the chairman will stand. Is it does it bother any of us that Rich does not stand? I don't I don't think so. Um, but if we were to go back a century or two, perhaps it might. Um, so as Laura, as you said, if we're going to follow the rules of the law, Robert's rules, then it would seem that adopting the small, uh, the small format makes sense and keeps us beholden to the actual rules that we've been told we need to follow, um, whether it be the full set of Robert's rules or, you know, the small board. We constitute a small board based on our size. Um, there is still option, you know, even though reading that, that second paragraph, you know, Mark, you stopped at the itemized list, but reading that below, uh, there is still opportunity to object or to move forward with with consensus. Um, so, you know, again, just kind of following so that everyone is literally, uh, as we're taking this from a book of rules on the same page, uh, it would make sense. So I think the query would be, since we operate in a more informal structure by doing these certain things, for example, we don't stand when we're recognized, but we do ask for a second which set of rules would be best suited to follow? So, and that, that was my thought on asking the questions too, because, um, you know, some of the other items, some of the other things I'm thinking of is we run the Wyndham Central Board the same way, but that's now a 12 member board. So that's a large board. So they can't do, you, you're not technically supposed to do small board rules, but we've always done that the same way too. We, we run it pretty um we try to be a lot more inclusive and um then 
I think Robert's rules a lot of times has us. So let's let me just make a, a phone call and ask some questions so I can um, be a little bit better prepared. I wasn't sure what was going to, you know, what there was going to be for thoughts from other other board members. Laura, let me just make sure Kate and Dwight don't have any comments. Are you all set, Dwight? Uh, just, just one. I, I think I think it's a great discussion, and certainly we want to be doing everything properly. The um, but I'm wondering. This is probably more for the reorg meeting. Is is can we amend the, uh, you know, the, um, the the small board Robert's rules? Because I think yeah, there are some things we want to maintain. One of them being the, the second thing. But that's something that may be something for the reorg. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's. Um, again, remember a lot of times, guys, when I'm not sure, guys and girls, there I go, I'm going to get myself in trouble again. <laughs> print that. Um, you know, um, there was a, a meeting, a few, well, town meeting last year, and there's been meetings where I said, um, this is what, this is how I'm ruling, or this is how I feel that we should do this, but you all get to disagree with me. And if you all say, um, well, Richie, no, we, we want to have that vote or we want to do something that I'm not allowing to be done or you all have the, the ability to call me on the carpet for that. So you do, Chad, you can say, Richie, you're talking. I want you to stand up because that's what it says in the rules. Um, we do have the ability to do that. So, I, um, again, we used to adopt the small board rules years ago because we had to adopt Robert's rules. Um, and then they just said Robert's rules count and we just stopped adopting the small board rules, but we kind of ran it as a small board. So let me just find out. Kate, do you have any comments or thoughts or? Um, I really like how Mark put a recap together. That was super helpful so that we didn't all have to digest the entire book of Robert's rules. Um, yeah, I think having the flexibility to I like the idea of all of us all having the power to say, yes, one person is out of line. You know, we can, we can do that. But at the same time, like, I don't want to get us so locked into, you know, like the, this is exactly how we do things. Um, that worries me. Um, and the motions, like I'm thinking back and I only have, I'm only in my second year. Like, so like just based on the limited information that I've, I know from my experience, like the motion's not being seconded, that feels like it could get tricky. So I just, yeah, I think more time to digest the information and see like what makes sense for us. And, you know, I know that there's a few of you that have had a lot more experience with that. So just calling those things into questions. And I like the idea of, you know, just getting a little bit more info on this before we do the reorg. Thank you. Laura, you got your hand up. Did you have a second? Yeah, I guess uh, I am interested. I, I mean, I, I see no problem with us adopting this, but just for clarity um, with within the board, and I think we do have the ability to modify some of these as we have, um, just for clarity with the board, I'd like to make sure that I understand the problem that we are trying to solve. Well, I think Mark was just trying to, oh, Mark, I'll, I'm sorry. Do you have your hand? Uh, you, you probably were going to say the same thing that, that, that I was, that I will say. Um, I'm not so sure that we're, that I'm trying to solve a problem other than bring us into compliance so that we're doing things the right way. That that's. And so, right. Oh. And so that, so that leads me to the question of, what are we doing that is wrong? And so is it that we are not, uh, that we didn't adopt Robert's rules for small boards? Is it Correct. literally that we didn't adopt it? Because it seems to me, otherwise, would you agree, Mark, that we already follow Robert's rules for small boards? So it's just the adopting that we need to do? Correct. Great. That is especially helpful. Okay, so let me just, Mark, I'm going to, did you have anything else you were answering a question? Uh, no, nothing else. Okay, so let me just find out exactly what, um, I, my thought was I was just going to call AOE and just ask them about that and just make sure where we're at. Um, and then I'll, I'll try to bring some more information to our next meeting. So 
Um, Kate, we're going to have to, under old business, we'll bring Robert's rules back again. Mark, thank you for bringing that up. But it, it's these are some really good discussions, guys, because we do have a lot of new board members. Um, so I, the first board meeting I ever came to in Dover, they didn't do any motions. What they did was they decided what they were going to vote on. The chairman wrote them down. And at the end of the meeting, at the end of a four-hour meeting, we voted on like 12 things. And that's all that showed in the minutes. So, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. But the biggest thing is, and it's like, I don't know if you folks, if I've told you this before, if you think I'm doing something wrong or something isn't being done properly, make sure that you, you, you bring that up. Um, you know, I'm not the, I'm, you know, I'm not the end all be all. So um, I try to do the best I can. We all do the best we can. So if I, you think I did something wrong, please let me know. Or if you think I did something that's not so bad that you need to bring it up, then, you know, just call me or, or contact me. Um, I have, I think we've covered all the old business. Is everybody good to move on to new business, even though we've done some of it already? Upcoming meeting. So the 18th, I need your key. Where, where should we meet? Because he's going to need to have internet access. Do we have all that set up? Yes. And he knows everything? Yes. Okay. Because he's Do been I... in our building before, so. Okay. Can you come on the 18th? Are you going to be around or are you on vacation? Vacation. And Kate, you're not around either, right? I am around. Um, I might, like, if you want me to show up in person, I might just bring tiny humans and tell devices. <laughs> I like tiny humans. Can I bring tiny puppies? Only <laughs> if Chad brings his, he's got a new one. Oh, Chad, are you going to be live or are you going to be on remote? Would you know? Um, I'd like to be uh, in person uh, and I don't have any reason otherwise. Um, and uh, can certainly help out Kate with uh, the elder of my tiny humans to look after her tinier humans. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to, I've also, um, unfortunately, I found out how much I hate cell phones more than I thought I did. So my cell phone died and I couldn't charge it and all my contacts are in there. So I didn't have anybody's phone numbers. Um, I've been trying to reach out to Dr. Backus to see if he'll come um, just to review the agenda with us at that meeting. Also, I usually like, you know, we try to do at least one of them with him there. So um, the batteries just showed up for my phone. So I'm hopefully when I get home, I can give him a call. Um, but we will, you know, we'll, we'll do a little more in depth and hopefully we'll have some more people and questions. When you review the, the report that Bill sends you, um, if there's any questions in the budget or anything that we haven't covered and, and you want to know, please send me an email just so I know um, I make sure we're prepared for the next meeting. And then we're also prepared for the um, annual meeting, which is April 26th in Dover. And I'm hoping that um, a lot of you all can make that one too. Um, guidance from the BDH. Oh, that was, we already discussed that. Nobody wants to have any more discussion about masking, do you? Cool. Um, Code of Ethics, Mark, you're up again. Um. So the SBA has a sample code of ethics. Um, it, they, they recommend that it be part of um, the reorg process. Um, I read through it. Um, the, the, the version that you all were sent um, is um, exactly what the SBA recommends, except I put our name in it and put it with our name on the heading. Um, I think I replaced the, uh, I think I replaced something that said uh, SD board or something along those those lines with with our name. Um, I think it's just I think it's good practice um, for for us to adopt it as a as a board um, and um, for as many if not everybody um, to sign it um, on an annual basis. Um, I think it's a sign of our our. Um, um, contract so to speak with the with the the voters um with the members of our community um i don't think that there's anything in there that we don't already do um i just think that it, it's a um i think it would be a, a good step 
um, forward for us to, to do it. Hey, I'm just wondering, I, we've got a couple public people here. Oh, well, Amelia's still in Dana. Um, was that, that was sent out in that packet too, or was that sent out the last meeting? <clears throat> the packet for this week. It is, in, okay, so you guys get to see it. Well, because I was gonna make I was gonna make Mark read it if if it only went to the board. No, I can see it. He doesn't have to read it. All good. Thank you. Yeah, there's okay. a link, gray. Right? I saw it. <laughs> okay. Yes. It, yeah, it, it's it's in the folder. And thank you, Amelia. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> well, so I'm gonna practice small board. I'm gonna make a motion that Mark read it out loud backwards. <laughs> oh gosh, it died. There's no. Yeah. You, you, you got a couple of bottles of, um, of uh, vodka with you? Okay, no alcohol at school. Um, so is there any discussion on that? Any comments, any thoughts? Again, I think Mark, you were attending this to be at the reorg meeting too, to, to, to actually vote on it. Correct, and, and just to be clear, um, they're, they're, we, are, um, we are not capable of requiring this to be signed by all board members, um, it would be a recommendation that we all sign it, um, but we cannot force it upon a board member because board members are elected by the public and they have got the right to serve whether they sign a code of ethics or not. But just um, for people that don't remember or aren't thinking about it, just remember too though, you do have to take an oath when you become a board member um, after your election. So every, every time you're elected. So like Chad, this year, if the people in Wardsboro, if you decide that you're not gonna run away on us and the people of Wardsboro want you back, you can't actually come to a board meeting and act as a board member until you're sworn in by the by a notary or by the, the, the school district clerk or town clerk. Um, so we always, you know, that's, even though you got sworn in when you were appointed, Every time you get reelected, you get sworn in because it's kind of like an oath and, and agreeing to do the right thing. Um, I think it says do no harm to any any Vermonter or any any resident or something. I, I don't remember it word for word, but um, so it's kind of like the same thing as that. Except Mark, you're suggesting that it be signed every year or that it just be signed when a, a person's elected to their spot. And then is it good? I don't remember seeing that. Is it good for? <clears throat> The three years or is it something you sign every year i'm suggesting that we that that it would be be made available at the reorg meeting to all board members to to sign it at that time because if nothing else it, it's a good reminder for people to have in front of them so you're suggesting that the reorg meeting is going to be live thank you um, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't suggesting that. That, which is why when I when I sent this document to you, I said it should be sent out ahead of time so that people can sign it before the reorg meeting. Um, <laughs> if you, is everybody good? Can we move on? We're 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 doing. Um, we're close on time. Mark policy C fourteen. Mark and Kate um, policy on section five hundred four and ADA grievance protocol. For students and staff, it is a required policy. It was new on 125. The coordinator info added no other changes to the model policy. And we recommend that the board adopt, adopting and then adopting. We, no, didn't we? We, we, we warned it last meeting. Right. Yeah. So it, we did we warn are, it last meeting. So right. now we're looking to adopt it. And it's been posted, right? So we got confirmation from our administrators that it was posted in all the proper locations. <laughs> so if there's any discussion of the you know, a motion to be to adopt it, not to accept it and post it. I'll move that we adopt C14. As posted. I'm sorry, Rich, what was that? As posted. As posted with the holes in it and everything. Yeah, I don't see the holes no more. Kate, are you good with that second still? Okay, so we have a motion by Mark, a second by Kate. Is there any discussion amongst the board? Are you all ready to vote? All those in favor signify so by saying aye. 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 aye.
It appears as though it's a unanimous I. I. There it is. <laughs> it's unanimously I. <laughs> it is. It, it, it's a unanimous vote in the affirmative. So policy C-14 has been adopted. So, uh, Rich? Yes. Since we're on policies, um, the policy committee will be meeting this Friday at nine o'clock um, via Zoom. Yeah, that went out. I think I just saw that go out today, right? Yep. And anybody who, who accesses our public documents, the all of our our uh, policy documents and agendas and minutes and all that are are available in the same from the same link. Okay. Um, I it really was a correspondence. I have two quick things. Um, is the web project moving along, Chad and, and Mark and Matt? As you guys plan, I mean everything's looking good, and you guys are still happy and smiling. Yeah, is Matt there? Yeah, Matt's smiling. Oh, but you didn't want to see it. Okay, I just want to make sure you guys are all good on that, and then. Um, ah, I forgot what the other thing was. Don't get old. Oh, solar. I did get contacted by a gentleman from Wardsboro. I guess Wardsboro is doing a solar project. Um, and I thought that Wardsboro was actually part of the Dover School project back in the day. And I was mistaken. It was actually part of the West River program. So, um, Again, we're, I'm still trying to set up a meeting with um, with Lori and the treasurer and Bill and one of our administrators um, to discuss the solar. So I, I can do a better we can do a better presentation to the board on that. But both both schools are getting solar credits um, from different installations. Um, so in case anybody asks anybody from Wardsboro. You know, how come you're not signing on? You signed on to the Newbrook one. You can only be part of one. You can't because um, you only got so much electricity you can use. So um, I know our next meeting is April 18th, Wardsboro, 6 o'clock, annual meeting April 26th, but uh, policy meeting on Friday, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Uh, okay. Um, the next thing we have is uh, recommendations on. Um, contracts for non-certified staff, and that requires us to go into executive session. So I would entertain a motion to move into executive session for contractual employment. So moved. Thank you, Mark. Do I have a second? Seconded. Okay. I'm going to give it to Chad this time because he unmuted himself so well. <laughs> Motion's been made by Mark and seconded by Chad. I had... 7.35, Peter. Oh, that's good enough. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Hey, Amelia. Oh, you left me. Too late. Okay. Um, we're in a uh, decision appears to be unanimous. It is a unanimous decision. Um, so... <laughs> Okay, so we came out of executive session at 8.50 by unanimous consent. So the- 7.50. Um, I'm sorry, 7.50, thank you, Mark. Um, so we, um, the, the administration presented us salary increases for the non-certified staff, which the board agrees to, um, and, the, and, the, and directed the administration to um, bring forth contracts with those amounts for the board to approve. Is there anything else that we need to do, folks? Okay, and if not, then I'm looking for that motion we always like at the end of the meeting. I would like to make a motion to adjourn at 7.49 p.m. Well, it's gotta be like 7.51 or two because- <laughs> um, That's out. right. 752 I like even numbers at 752 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> Dwight, you good with that seconding? I'm good. Second. Okay, so Dwight seconded Mark. Kate made the motion. We're all in favor. 
Thank you, everybody. Really good meeting. A lot accomplished tonight. Thanks.